Hey, my name is Amelia, and I'm here with my friend Mike. Hello, everybody. And Peter, who's behind the camera. Hello there. <laughs> and we are all sitting in Primrose Hill, not just to evade work emails, a little bit to <laughs> evade work emails, but also, Mike, because... Well, because this week is English Wine Week. Uh, yep. So this week is lots of winos from all the way around the country, all the merchants, all the sommeliers out Producers. there. Producers as well, absolutely. We're all here to kind of tell the general public about all the great things that's happening with English wine. It really is a thing these days. And so uh, that's pretty much why we're sat here as well. So we're going to tell you a little bit about it. And um, I've actually accosted Mike's wife's picnic basket <laughs> to bring you guys a whole range of sparkling wine as well as still wine. Now, I think when people think about English wine, they normally tend to think about the bubbles because that is what is now internationally renowned um, from England. But we actually make all kinds of styles of wine from as far up north as Yorkshire, even in Wales, they're making wine. I must confess, we do not have two examples from either of those places today, but they are available, mm -hmm. absolutely. First bowls we're going to have is actually made by Waitrose themselves. So the first Brilliant. supermarket right. to start making their own wine. So this is their Letford Estate, made at the Waitrose Farm in Hampshire. And it's a blend of the three main grapes used to make champagne, so Chardonnay, Pinot Noir, and Pinot Meunier. And it's the 2012 vintage, which was a great vintage. And now it's available at stores with a 20% discount, making it oh, about 20 quid. Reason English wines have been so, so successful, especially in all these international competitions, is because where they're planted, the grapes manage to keep their acidity, which makes them really, really super fresh. So in that one, um, without trying to digress too much onto a weird tasting note here, you know, but that kind of that citrus um, overlay, that really pure green apple taste to it, it all complements so well with those kind of bready biscuity things you get from traditional method wines, which in England is exactly what people are doing. So when people talk about the price of these things, and sometimes I, I do appreciate that people think, well, 20 quid for it, you know, is, is, is that cheap, you know? Well, it is. This is an expensive method of making wines. And they don't have the infrastructure like champagne no. to be making these on such a regular basis and in such quantities. Absolutely. In champagne. The offer's only on for the next week or so. Right. So we should probably so, leg it up. To, yeah, I was going to say, we've well, <laughs> got to try and beat us to the internet. There you go. So, cheers. Cheers. Funnily enough, actually, I'm going to follow up from the uh, the Letford Estate okay. with a wine from just down the road. Ah. From actually uh, a good friend of mine, he's uh, he's got a family farm over there. It's a guy called Hugh Little, and he makes Cottonworth wines. And this one, in particular, so similar kind of setup in terms of the grapes, champagne mm -hmm. varieties. Mm -hmm. uh, but this one has actually just won a gold medal at the IWC Awards at oh, London. Oh wow! Wine Fest. Well, so, let me have a taste of this. And this is non-vintage, right? This is, the other one was made in 2012, and this is a blend of different. That's grapes, absolutely right? right. Yeah. So basically, they do that for uh, they do that in order for consistency, so that every time people pick up a bottle. This is going to be the Cottonworth taste. I like that. It's definitely a lot drier and zestier. I can imagine this like a smoked salmon. You can have this at a drinks party with like little canapes and just like cut right through. Absolutely. You know, a nice sunny day on the rolling hills of Hampshire and you'll be all over that one. So, uh -huh. yeah. Good choice. Cheers for that one. Good there choice. you go. Right. Your turn. Yes. So, we're going to still be on bubbles, but now we're going to a different county and a different colour, my favourite colour, rosé. Oh, well, Balfour's yeah, Hush Heath has nice. recently yeah. won quite a few awards. Um, I think it's fantastic. They've also been making Pinot Noir now for 10 years and I think by having that extra vine age for their Pinot Noir you definitely get a lot of fruit, concentrated kind of ripe cherries and strawberries along with that very good acidity which English wine is known for. Fantastic. Oh, thank you. Um, you can actually find this wine in all kinds of places. Um, Theoretically, they have it um, in first class on BA. Not that I would know. I was going to say I can I can't confirm that either. Yeah. So, yeah. Also in Harrods, um, yeah. Liberty Wines, Waitrose Cellars, Whole Foods, Good mm. Taste, Healthy People. Yeah, you know. And how much is it going for? Twenty eight pounds. So it's the same as Cottonwood. That's not too bad, huh? Yeah, and it's two thousand thirteen vintage, so a slightly later vintage. But I just think it's a really pretty, elegant rosé, which still has lots of fruit there. Right, oh, yeah, that cherry is fantastic actually, really nice. Very ripe, very fruity, very good choice. Great. We are now moving on to still wine. 
okay. onto the Bacchus grape, which I just love. I think it's a great name. It gets to the heart of what wine should be about. And it's the third most planted grape variety in the UK. One of my favorite versions of the Bacchus grape, which is known to be kind of elderflowery and um, grassy, um, is one made in a London-based winery. They get their grapes from Essex and Kent, and then those grapes get taken to London Crew Winery. And they make this gorgeous Bacchus. This is their second time they've made it, and it's done extremely well. And it's just won Best Bacchus in Class at the 2017 International Wine Championships. And it's 15 pounds. Uh, I just think for a drinks party, just if you want to offer something a bit different, as opposed to like a, a usual Sauvignon Blanc or Pinot Grigio auction, this, it's so easy to drink on its own, as you were saying, like it's fresh and it's low alcohol. But also, what, do you think it'd be great with like goat's cheese or summer salad and sitting outside, like summer's day? This is Waitrose's English Dry White, the lime selection, and it's made for them by Denby's Wine Estate, which is uh, down in Surrey, um, just south of London, basically. This one particular is Cheval Blanc, which is a hybrid grape. Um, and when I talk about it being a hybrid, it basically just means that it's coked for a long, long time with all kinds of different English weather uh, and still makes a cracking wine. So come and have a try I'm this I'm excited one. to try this, yeah. Again, quite a low in alcohol. So yeah. I think for me, like if you had sort of like a sort of like a spicy, a spicy fish salad or something like that, like get some crayfish tails in there, a bit of chili powder, the chili powder, chili, you know, chili flakes, and uh, Actually, I think go from fusion there. Fusion food and yeah, Thai food absolutely. would be amazing because it's, well, it's got the got acidity, the, but it's got the aromatics yeah, as well, aromatics. right? Brilliant. Very nice choice. It's that a one. bit floral as well, which is gorgeous. I really, yeah, for seven pounds or whatever. Seven quid right now. Go and buy it. Honestly, yeah. very good. <laughs> So we are actually now going on to Pinot Noir, which is the second most planted grape in the UK, but you still don't see many Pinot Noirs out there just because it does take a few years for Pinot Noir to really age and get the concentration we need to deal with the acidity. Yeah. I could have gone for various uh, ones. I love Bolneys, for example. Well, Sheath um, do a very good one as well. I have to say, yeah, but. and how Sheath do a very good one as well. But I've actually gone for Gusborne's Pinot Noir um, from 2014. And uh, they are based in Kent, and I love it because you do, again, it's about getting that combination of appreciating the lovely tart cherries, and you kind of get pomegranate and cranberries with this. And they do put the, um, the grapes into barrique, barrel, for about 10 months, which just gives it a subtle kind of spice and rounds it out really beautifully. So um, I'll just see what you think. And this is £22, which I think for a really well-made Pinot Noir never comes cheap wherever it's from, particularly if you want a well-balanced, elegant one which shows the fruit and um, various spicy notes and has good balance. So, Well, I have to say the first thing, as you said about that spice, that spiciness is, mm. is one of the first things that comes off. And I'm thinking like Moroccan food mm. or kind of some meze. Like a tagine or something like tagine that. Tagine, because yeah, yeah. It, it's got the lightness and acidity which can like cut through lots of the heaviness of mm. the food. Look. I think as we were saying earlier, there's literally no excuse anymore. You can go out and buy these. They're either online or at a supermarket near you. And there's so many good discounts going on. Absolutely. So take advantage of it. Go out and get it. Try these. See if you agree with us. And but surprise your friends too. Absolutely. Get them to drink it as well. Absolutely. So look, cheers, cheers everybody. Cheers, guys. What do you think? <laughs>